Hi, this is Matt McCourt, and uh, the topic of the day is, what was that? Tell us about the first Wild Dogs gig. Okay, August 20th, 1982, San Francisco, California. Um, we hadn't ever planned to be a live performing band when the Wild Dogs started. We weren't even called Wild Dogs. It was a funny name that we chose because of Danny's killer mutts, <laughs> two little dogs that lived on the stairs on the way down to the basement we practiced in. The place we practiced in was maybe six. One, six, two, we were, we, we almost scraped the ceiling with our head. It was Danny's bedroom, actually. And uh, that's where Dean would set his giant drum set up. Jeff Mark would set two 50 watt Marshall heads and two cabinets. And Danny used two SVT cabinets and a 500 watt power amp. It was loud as hell, man. <laughs> the neighbors moved out, the lawn died. But uh, we, uh, we went through all the rigmarole. We got an album out, we got Dean. And uh, Mike Varney said, look, we're going to have a gig that MTV is going to be shooting at to follow up the, uh, the interview that I saw. For, that's how I met Mike Varney was I saw him on MTV with J.J. Jackson and uh, got down. You know, when, JC, when he said, go get a pen and write down this address, I did. We sent them a tape and voila. So uh, that was like a year before. And so we went down to San Francisco. That's the, <laughs> Funny story. Dean had a van that his dad used for his carpet store. That's what Dean's vehicle was. He never drove. He always had a driver, which is probably pretty good. But uh, he was my friend, so he stayed at my house. And uh, the tires were horrible on the van. And so I went and got some used tires. And uh, I didn't take the van up there to get them changed. I brought the tires back to change the tires myself. Oh, man, what a pain in the ass. So I had to unload all the gear. And Dean had a lot of drums at the time. This is just a drum van. The other van that Jeff drove, uh, it had all the guitar amps, four, two Marshall stacks, and I think three or four SVT cabinets. That's where Danny and Jeff and uh, Jesse Samsel, the sound guy, rode. And uh, our, our van was more fun, way more fun. <laughs> Yeah, smoking bong hits, and somebody brought a whole bunch of fried chicken. And <laughs> anyway, so uh, and Blaine Hess, the guy that did the the original Wild Dogs logo, the the other T shirt I sell, he uh, he kept stopping at MPM for Paquito burrito, and he farted the whole way down. <laughs> and uh, he looked like a giant version of Robbie on on the Brady Bunch. <laughs> Remember that kid with the glasses and the blonde hair. So anyway, <laughs> we scoop everybody up, and we go. Uh, it was hell trying to get out of town, let me tell you. I went to rent a trailer. So I get the tires changed in the van, the van loaded, all myself, because Dean was tired, and he ate a bunch of heat. He was napping on the couch eating donut cereal and watching cartoons. I didn't get a help. Of that. I did it all myself. But uh, story of my life. And then I drove to California. But I went to go get a trailer that I had reserved a month before. And they didn't have it. <laughs> Nobody had a trailer. <laughs> so we had to all cram in the van. <laughs> with all of Dean's drums. I'm wore out by this time. I yelled at the guy at the, at the trailer thing. I was like, I reserved this. And uh, he was just a jerk. And... Uh, well, that's okay. There's a Walgreens right there now. So <laughs> there used to be a porn store and a, and a porn shop, but that'll show him. <laughs> I yelled at the guy. I lost my voice. I couldn't talk. I came back. I said, "No trailer. Let's go." We pile in the van and get the other guy. Stop in Salem and pick up the roadie. And uh, Blaine was up, came to my house, and uh, we head off to San Francisco. Twelve hour drive. I drove the entire twelve hours. And we show up, because I've been in San Francisco before. It's Broadway, and uh, it's right across the street from the Mabuhe Gardens, where it kept, you know, not too far from where we saw Motorhead in 1981 with Ranger opening, me and Mick Zane and Kip. And uh, Kip was with us, yeah, that's right. So <laughs> we show up to the gig, park in the front, and it's way early. So uh, me and Kip took a walk. Walk, we walked up to Chinatown. I mean, I should have been totally, I was bushed by the time we went on stage, but walked all through Chinatown and all through everywhere and 
came back, and finally it was time to load in. And uh, Varney's band was headlining. Culprit was second, and we were the first band. And uh, so we waited and waited and waited. The rock and roll is about hurry up and wait, and then wait a little more because people aren't ready. And I kind of think that song, is People Get Ready, is all about rock and roll. <laughs> no, just kidding. <sighs> Sorry. I'm not supposed to do that in a pub, but I'll do it on my TV show, so tough shit. Hey, it's Beer 30 here, and I like to say this show is brought to you by Rogue Dreamland Beer, the DIY special beer for us DIY guys, because I'm a do-it-yourselfer. Always have been. So uh, we load in, we set up, and I can't hardly sing at the sound check because <laughs> I blew my voice out yelling. I really yelled at this guy, really a lot at the trailer place. But, you know, we went to I 5 over Shasta and blah, 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 down to blah, 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 and end up in San Francisco and we're setting up. Finally, it's showtime. And uh, that gig, uh, Dean had given me some zebra, white and black zebra pants that looked like they were made out of some sort of pajama material or curtain material. And, uh, well, Bill Hale, the world famous. Metal photographer. He did the, the the photos for the Metallica book and for Mustaine, and he was there and he shot the show. And uh, well, I was so fashionable with my and I had hair, man. I had punk hair because you know I was a, I'm a punk rocker. That's where I started. I started as a new wave punk rocker. That's where the Ravers came from. And this band was just kind of a fluke. Where uh, sure I could write I can write songs for this. Why not? And it turned into a band and. Uh, much to the other guys, I'm sure, much to their chagrin. I learned that word from Paul Gilbert, by the way, who is a vocabularist. And uh, I had never knew, I didn't know what that meant. I had to look it up when he said, much to my chagrin. And so I've been using it ever since. Sounds, uh, thanks, Paul. I think Paul Gilbert lives in Portland now. But uh, why? I have no idea. The highest rents on the West Coast, practically. And. Well, you know, it rains here 10 months of the year. That's why I'm such a great player. And I can play every instrument under the sun because it was so rainy outside. And everybody practiced at my basement that uh, they left their drum set. They left everything, sometimes for a year or two. And so I mastered them all. But uh, so we do the gig. And uh, I don't know what to do because I'm half a punk rocker. And I've always played guitar while I was singing. So that's the first time I've ever been a lead singer in any band. And, uh, well, we did the gig, and we met Brian Liu, and I already knew K.J. Downton from, he lived in uh, Roseburg, and uh, all these San Francisco guys who became like the, the metal mavens of the, the 80s. These guys are the guys responsible for really breaking Metallica and Slayer and that whole thing that you know killed our audience after those guys came around. We were like, you know, gangrene. They didn't want to touch us. So uh, we did the show, and uh, uh, Scott Earl asked us to come up and play in Seattle in a couple of weeks, and that's how the Wild Dogs live thing started. We knew that we had to play live to keep Dean because Dean was not going to, he was going to take off. That guy was destined for greatness from the first time I saw him at Eli's playing to six people with Jay Reynolds and Kid Dorn. And we did the Malice demo uh, like a week or two after we met Dean. And uh, he eventually, he didn't want to join Malice, and he eventually came over and destroyed Jamie St. James' drum set. I mean, really destroyed it. Broke the, broke the foot pedal, <laughs> the footboard on the kick drum pedal. It was clean in half, and it was a ghost pedal. It was supposed to be the strongest pedal in the, <laughs> in the whole lineup at that time. But uh, that was how we started playing live. And then we played in Seattle t- uh, two weeks later, and uh, the thing came out on MTV, and it just kind of took off from there. We ended up playing in Portland probably six or seven months later. We kept playing in San Francisco and Seattle, and then we played in Longview, got the, the front page of the newspaper, and uh, before we, we didn't play in Portland for a long time, although we got airplay on KGON for the song, my song, Born to Rock. And it was uh, not the version with Dean, but it was a version we did for the homegrown album that was KGON's compilation. And, uh, well, that's about it for the start of the Wild Dogs live career. I was trying to make this short. 
uh, time for another beer. Cheers, man.